The startup life really isn't for everyone. There's a, a lot of commitment, a lot of time investment. What attracted you to this space? So I've always been the kind of person who focuses on doing. I'm not one to who enjoys sitting around and planning and strategizing for days on end. I like to get my hands dirty and execute. And I mean, that's what startup life really is. It's so fast moving. Things are getting done. I don't know if you've, if people here have ever read the Lean Startup or the Lean Movement, but you're constantly iterating, doing, uh, testing, launching. And so that fast pace is something that really attracted me to startup life. It's kind of taking it one step further in terms of being a VC because not only are you really in the startup world, but you are interacting with startups of all kinds. Can you talk about what interested you in that space? My interest in VC was a little serendipitous. I didn't set my um, eyes on it when I started my career. But after working in um, technology innovation at one of the big banks, uh, I got a little bit bored quickly because you know the pace of execution was pretty slow. Um, and then I, you know, made my way over to uh, Mars, which is a large innovation center here in the city, and made my way into VC from there. Um, and it's funny because the way I got into VC was um, a very, very uh, important individual, a female, a partner who was at the firm at the time who recognized something in me that I probably didn't even see in myself and sort of, um, you know, quote unquote, moved the dial for me and really brought me into the world. And once I had a taste for it, I, I realized that this is, you know, something I not only love, but something I can really contribute to. What are some of the challenges that you've seen in the startup community, particularly when we're talking about female founders? So female founders, you know, one of the hardest thing for them is that there's not a lot of female VCs or investors around the table, um, particularly at the decision-making level. Um, that, you know, if you're a female founder and your business is catered to females as well, you know, not a lot of males around the table may understand that. There was a company that I invested in that was selling um, jewelry online, and for, that was just the case. The male investors around the table didn't understand the market, the size of the market, the marketing strategy through influencers that they were doing, and so that becomes a real challenge for these um, female founders. What can we do to overcome some of those challenges? You know, when can we get to the point where all of a sudden there is equal opportunity for startups that are run by women? For sure. I mean, the obvious one is getting more women in investment roles and not just at the junior level, which we're starting to see a lot more of, which is fantastic, but at the senior decision making level. Um, and, you know, that's that's good, not just for the female founders, but for, you know, collectively everybody, because that brings diversity of opinion, diversity of thought, you know, females, people of color, people of different age groups, all of that will really just help um, to diversify sort of the, the you know, companies and, and the way in which companies are being looked at. Um, what has been your opinion in terms of some of these reports that have been out talking about the fact that diversity leads to an actual increase in revenue at startups in particular? I think that they ring completely true. Um, one of the, the hiring practices that 500 startups uses, um, which is the firm that I work at, is to, to sort of think about um, hiring in a different way. So if you have two candidates and one has more experience than the other, but the one with lesser experience is actually a diverse candidate, their diversity will actually bring more to the table than that experience would. And that's sort of um, something that we've been, that, that has been ingrained into us at 500 when, when we're hiring. And I've seen it in practice and I think it absolutely rings true because that diversity of thought, different ways of thinking, um, people having different networks, different backgrounds, that brings so much more to the table than having sort of raw experience can. What do you have to say to women who have started businesses but don't recognize perhaps that there's a bigger opportunity? I would tell those those women that, you know, there's there's definitely two different types of business, businesses that you can bring to the table. If it is sort of a quote unquote lifestyle business, that is perfectly fine, you know. If you are going after sort of a, an elusive startup company and you want to make it into something, you know, really, really big, um, that does require a certain, you know, way of thinking, amount of dedication. I, I don't, you know, I do see a lot of women that fall into the former category, but I think we are starting to see a lot more that are sort of branching out into the latter category and starting to think bigger. Um, I don't want to put any stereotypes on, on women and sort of what they are or aren't doing. I think just because we've had such a, a lack of female founders, we're probably seeing a lot more in the former category. But I think as time goes on and we see a lot more women stepping up, uh, that won't be the case anymore.